Okay, my friends, this is an attempt to set the Z record straight. This is September 2015, mud fossilization of soft tissues. Abstract, mud can preserve creatures in exquisite detail, fully articulated soft tissue anatomical models of body parts are discussed. And then I go down to explain exactly how it happened and that the mud fossilization of soft tissues and, and how it happens and so forth and what the, 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 how the different fascia plays a part in fascia. It's a new science because at this time they didn't even understand fascia. I'm not kidding you. I worked with some of the top anatomists in the world, and then in 2018, they said, yes, this below the fascia, right in that area, is what's called the interstitium, and they had never seen it before, but I was seeing it in the mud fossils. That's another story. Anyway, the research was done by me, an independent researcher in Middletown, Connecticut, over the course of several years, and that was in 2015, so it was maybe three, four years before that I started. And I show the conclusion is that soft tissue preservation is possible in wet molecular size silicates. So it's always the silicates. The silicates do a lot, which is what you're going to see in a minute. Basically, very fine clay and mud. Now, I thought it was due to cold, too, but it wasn't. It's not due to cold. It was due to the hot water flood that Velikovsky talks about as because we almost got impacted by a huge comet. Apparently, it was Venus, and it almost hit us. And at that time, everything boiled and combusted. It took seven days. The heat was coming at us for seven days, and then it just glanced off our atmosphere. Literally, it was a worldwide flood of hot water. And that's what created exactly what they found, as you will see in a second. They have now admitted this is all correct. My, everything that I was saying was right. And it created this encasement, and the, the um, tissues turned into mud fossils. Even other creatures like this goose. There's this feather pattern in his head. And it's flat on one side and not on the other. It's perfect. And his neck is here. This was a, a, something called nucleophilic substitution and invasion. So in this wet type of condition, in these um, soup, really, of, of blood and guts and acids and salts and who knows what, it invades. And what happens is collagens turn into aluminum silicates, which are feldspar. The rest turns into whatever is in the waters. It might be this, or it might be limestone, or it might be opal, it could be just about anything. But bones turn, there's no more white bones in this stuff. The white bones don't exist. The white bones are turned into brown stones. All right, even the cartilage, it's invasion. All right. Now, I do know that Derek Briggs refused to examine my stuff from September 2015, and it's precisely what he's now claiming to have discovered, as I believe you saw in this article right here, Exceptional Preservation, exactly the same thing that I talked about. And this is Derek Briggs. He's one of the uh, uh, people that signed it to it now. This is what academic fraud is. This is the University of Chicago, and they talk about determining and defining academic fraud. Now, there's a whole bunch of different things, but here's the ones that are my problems, is selective suppression of unwanted or unacceptable results and theft of ideas. That's exactly what has happened to me. By it appears to me, Derek Briggs at Yale University, and the problem with Derek Briggs was that I presented this over a course of a number of years, and I did everything that they requested. They wanted DNA, they wanted CAT scans, and they still never, ever, ever once allowed me to bring the stuff in there. He said, "I don't want to see it. Don't bring it here," and and that was it. I was told to go away, and then he's taken credit for this now. That is, it was selective suppression of unwanted and unacceptable results because I have giants. I have giant human beings. And I'll show you the DNA test and I'll show you some of the giant parts. 
And then, of course, he took my ideas. I don't think that's right. I don't think this is right at all. Okay, this is um, this is un undeniable evidence. This is CAT, uh, not CAT scan, but it, well, part of it was a fingertip was CAT scan, but that is a palm of a hand. It's almost four feet wide. It's your left hand, and I'll show you a little more detail. This head was also tried to be presented to Yale. They wouldn't accept it. They wanted it CAT scanned. We had a CAT scan. They still wouldn't look at it. This is when I wrote this book, Minds in Collision, which in Bud Fossils, Velikovsky, and Minds in Collision. He wrote Worlds in Collision and was sanctioned by academia 11 weeks, number one, on the best-selling list, and they forced the publisher to take the book off the shelves because they didn't like what he was saying. That goes back to 1950. And he was the one that talked about the hot water flood. Makes It made sense to everything. Now, here's what I had CAT scanned and DNA tested in the whole nine yards. Was Well, this one here, I obviously can't, I couldn't lift this. This is three feet long. That's a fingertip. Now take a time and watch this. Now let me turn this off. All right, you see this? That is a fingernail. You see the fingernail here? This little pad here is is what the little bumper that goes between bones, so they don't scrub. Now this vein and artery here. This I actually broke off myself. This was complete. I smashed it off so that I could get down inside where there's blood because there is no blood in the fingertips on the very outside edge because it's extremely thick. And this is what popped off was fingerprints. You see that? These are sweat pores and that's one ridge of a fingerprint. It's as big as my thumb. This is what it looks like right here. That's why I had to break through there. You can't get any blood out of there. But down in here, it's saturated with blood. I mean saturated. And I just took it out like almost like raw red blood. Because once they get sealed and encapsulated, there's just a ton of blood in them. A lot of blood. Well, look here. Well, anyway, that was the finger outside, the fingernail. And this is the fingerprints of that same finger. And this is where this is, the blood is, this is tons of blood in them, tons of blood. That came right out of there, just as soon as you take them out of the ground or you break through the outside veneer and get inside, the blood will literally come right out. And I mean, some places it'll come out just, as, just in copious quantities, absolutely copious quantities. Now, so I've shown you the fingerprints and I've shown you the fingertip. And here's where all the blood is, is underneath, it's down inside, but they're saturated with blood. All right, those are what they call the terminals. Now, you saw the lung, I think, all right, and the heavy-duty fabric, and the one that has no fabric, and the blood's coming out of it. Uh, what else didn't I show you? Well, there's the head. And this, we did, we did everything they asked for. We even had a CAT scan where they said they had theirs done. And then nobody would, would discuss it, not a single word after that. They just refused. This is the, the nose is the flesh is pushed away from the nose and the cartilage is sticking out. This black and this red is ferrous oxides. Ferrous means iron. Iron is in your blood. You have two different states of them. Primarily, you have the red, which is hematite, which is red blood, artery blood, has an extra oxygen. It has three oxygens. The black is what's called magnetite, and it only has two oxygens. That's after you use up one oxygen breathing, you know, and, and consuming it in your tissues. See, I would, th I would think Yale and Peabody Museum, they'd love to look at all this. I, I thought they would, but they won't. They refuse. Absolutely refuse. Oh, those are just rocks. I said, you've got to be kidding me. They say, no, those are just rocks. That's, I mean, uh, 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 that's suppression. This is, you can see where the bone came down. That's the tibia. This is where the fibula sits. And they all do the same thing. Where the fibula was, they fall off. And see them, they fall right off. And these have different types of toes. These don't have the type of toes we have. And these have springs inside them, some of them. I'm not sure about this one. But, I well, let me show you. 
All right, you saw this one here has the fibula is falling off. The same thing as, as, as mine here. And that is mine here in my shop. Now, this I want to show you is is a different, a different thing. Th that's the ball in the back here. Same as that heel, the heel bone. All right. That strap comes right up to here, which is this strap. It comes right up to, I'm going to show you a closer shot of this in a minute. But this is how it... You're supposed to have bones in here. There's no bones in this. <laughs> you see that little cradle there? There's a bone, your leg bone that comes down. It sits in that cradle basically and rocks around. And this comes up and straps to it to hold it in place. You see it over here? You see it? That's basically what this, this one here is right there. And it, it, the strap comes up the same way. But this is nothing like ours. And that... There's two springs. This one loads up and then that one loads up. And they have actually little tabs and latches and so forth. We got a lot of this stuff and it should be investigated by, certainly by Yale University and people like that. And then for them to take credit for this, that just that, that has a very, very bad odor. And I think they're, you know, I don't, I don't think it's right at all. And if you look up academic fraud, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, you know, they wanted DNA reports. I had all the DNA reports done. We had three different samples done, and this was very, very well done. Very good people to work with, Helix Biolabs. Completely open to talk to me. Very, very, I was really impressed, i got to be honest with you. And, you know, it wasn't cheap. And but it was it was conclusive. It was 100% certain, and every all the negative tests were negative, and all of the positive tests were positive. It was it was human DNA, and they were two of them out of the three were excellent quality DNA sequences. The third one was the real muddy mud fossil, which was still good, but it wasn't excellent quality. These he said this was just like raw blood, and it was it was just basically like raw blood, and he said there was no question it was it, it was so dense and so high quality that it couldn't unless i put drops of blood in there which i did not do now homo sapien mitochondrial b genes and the mitochondrial d loop this is what it was and this was this was a very good quality test so i think that should have been at least considered but it was just left off and said oh there's dna everywhere you can't we can't look at that because it's just it's got to be impossible and you know, and now he's taking credit for it. That's a, that's a killer. And that's exactly what it says here, defining academic fraud. Selective suppression, which is what exactly what happened, of unwanted, unacceptable results, and then the theft of the ideas. I got a double whammy going on here. Because here's me, in 2015, mud fossils, they could preserve creatures in exquisite detail. Anatomical models of the body parts, and as I discussed them, they're just anyway. You saw that, and now here he is taking credit for it, saying that now they figured out how soft-bodied creatures promoted by silica-rich oceans. It happened in one layer at one time in one strata, and now Derek Briggs is the one that says he's figured it out. I, I at least am owed an apology, and probably a lot more than that if I really wanted to pursue it. 